Carl Frotch, um, what do I think about him? Um, well, he's someone I've got a lot of time for. I really have got a lot of time for Carl Frotch. Um, I think he's a top, top boxer. Um, I, I think it's a it's a bit really, in some ways, unfortunate how it panned out for him in the last couple of fights with, with Groves. And I'll, I'll tell you why I think it. I think that there's a, a real uh, section of the public who went off him in those two fights. I think after the first fight, George Groves won a lot of support. I think I think a lot of people felt sorry for him. I think it's human nature. I think you see someone visibly upset and he was doing well in the fight. He was in that first fight. Uh, I don't think Frotch was really prepared for it. I think he did think he was just gonna breeze him. And I do think that Frotch at his best could finish Groves and evidently did in the second fight. I think in the second fight he was really up for it. I think in the first fight, I think he just thought, I want to knock this guy out. He's big mouth, all mouth, not giving me respect and he's nothing to worry about. And actually, George Groves showed that he had a lot of pedigree and I think he won a lot of fans over there. And I think Frotch actually lost it, quite a few fans. Um, and for that, in that sense, it's it's a, it's a shame uh, because Frotch was someone who he, I don't think he ducked anyone. He chased Carl Zaghi as much as he could early on in his career. Whether he would have beaten him is another topic. I think fights make star, uh, styles make fights, um, and Frotch would have been durable. He, I think he would have. He would have kept going. Frotch was a 15 round boxer in my opinion. So was Calzaghi. Great endurance. Could keep going. I think Frotch did have some punch power. Um, and who knows. Maybe Calzaghi would have been a bit too slick for him. But I don't think it would have been an easy fight. And I think if Frotch wanted that fight that badly. At that stage in his career. Um, with the pedigree that he had. And the career he went on to have. You've got to think. He, he wouldn't have probably be thinking about wanting uh, just a quick payday. It wouldn't make sense to me that. I think the people around him, Rob McCracken is, is normally, that was his trainer, someone who's quite cautious, I think, and quite good at selecting the fights. Um, for example, the first Mikhail Kessler fight that Frotch lost, um, Rob McCracken didn't want him to take it. So Rob McCracken's obviously got enough about him to pick the right route, um, you got to remember Rob McCracken, who's Anthony Joshua's trainer, never picked out the route of Andy Ruiz for Joshua. That was uh, Andy Ruiz comes in late, so I think you got to give Rob McCracken a lot of credit here to say that if he was, if if Froch was going for Kelzaghi, and I think he could, he's someone who listens to his team, he comes across like that. Uh, that there must be some must have he must have had a good chance they must have believed that he had a good chance whether he would have won is another topic we'll never know um but he never ducked anyone for he never ducked anyone and i think he's got some good wins uh jermaine taylor i mean class fight um uh arthur abraham uh glenn johnson um is it glenn johnson i can't remember it's the footballer in it yeah, Glenn Johnson. Yeah, um, Kessler, the 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 second time against Kessler, uh, great win. Andre Ward, that loss. I think Styles make fights. Andre Ward was all wrong for Frotch, and he just had his number. I think Andre Ward is a really top, top slick boxer. He might as well be doing a different sport to what Frotch is doing. It's it's like having a uh, you know a, ch a, a chess board in front of you, and some of you have got half of you have got chess pieces, and the other half have got you know like drafts or something like checkers. You know, it's it, it's not going to work out. It's you, you're coming at it from different angles. Uh, and he was just all wrong for him, you know. And it was Andre Ward's chessboard. Andre Ward had his chess pieces. Carl Frotz didn't. And so that was it, you know, because they were playing chess, not bloody drafts. It was one of them. 
he just couldn't uh, you can see the frustration in that fight but I don't think that takes anything away from Foch's career I think if you, you, you sometimes you got to just hold your hands up and say oh, I've lost on the day um, I thought Kessler that first loss uh, I think he took that fight late second fight he comes back prepared and he wins it um, great win and then you've got the two George Groves fights I, I don't know if I think I put George Groves on a top top level but he was a world world champion and end of the day Frosch beat him twice whatever you think about that first fight Frosch beat him twice and I think that fight was such a big fight a lot of the British public bought into it I remember watching it, it loads of people there a lot of people who weren't really into boxing were watching it and I think because they weren't really into boxing they didn't really know the boxers I don't think they really recognised when Frotch was coming into his own that's my opinion um, it's not the opinion of everyone but I, I think Frotch was coming into his own in that fight um, and I do think possibly a little bit of the um, of the um, hype around Frotch um, if you can call it hype hype sounds like it, it's not just but I think the referee possibly saw it too maybe he saw it because he was looking at it through goggles of oh, superstar Frotch and nobody Groves I don't know unfairly because like I said Groves went on to win a world champion uh, world championship Um but I thought it. I thought it was going one way. The ref thought it, and apart from all the commotion of a lot of people who, to be honest, I think a lot of them didn't really know what they were on about. Um, Frotch got a, a, a win, probably prematurely, um, but that's in Gros in Gros favour, and it was actually not. Like I say, it wasn't too Frotch to Frotch's advantage because he came out of it looking like he wasn't going to win a fight that actually he was so I've got lo loads of time for Cole Frotch I think he's top he's, he's definitely for me definitely you've got to mention him when you're talking about top 5 British boxers for me I'm not saying he's in it because there's a fair few people in that list that'd be a good video actually wouldn't it might do that um, but you've got to mention his name I've uh, got a lot of time for him and I think you've only got to look up his career, look at his fights. He was an entertaining boxer, move forward, just punch. And he used to do this punch where he's sort of up his arm low and he's sort of walk into it like with his, with his, with his uh, ha uh, hand coming from like low so you couldn't really see it. He just didn't give a fuck. He was just like Wah! going for it. It was great. Um, you know, <laughs> I've seen him throw punches like that quite a lot. Um, you know, just sort of that hand coming down and just sort of step into it, this like low drive, you know, this sort of English might, uh, you know, not the British Sheriff of Nottingham or something that's come to town. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, I think Carl Frosch, top, top fighter, top fighter, you've got to put him in the top five bracket of in, uh, British boxers. Um, and if you're someone who doesn't give him credit because of the George Groves that liked, I would say check out his videos, look at his record, maybe look at those George Gross fights again. Um, and I reckon you'll see someone who actually was worth his salt.